So Matt is going to show us how he composited this photo in Adobe Photoshop. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around this channel and you'd like to learn all about car photography in Photoshop, then go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. And so another successful collaboration all the way from Poland this time. Matt is going to walk us through the entire thought process behind the photo, how he did the toning in Lightroom and then moved it to Photoshop and all the you know, thought process behind what he've created. Now, if you're not familiar with Matt, here's his Instagram account. Give him a follow. And he's also available on Facebook. I'll leave a link to his accounts in the description below. All right, without any further ado, I'm done talking. I'll hand it over to Matt. All right, so uh, hello everyone. Um, my name is Matt and I'm a car photographer from Poland. I started car photography in 2017 Although this is not my first try in the photography space because I'm a fashion and beauty retoucher on a daily basis. So I kind of know a thing or two about post-production of photos. So as you see today, we would like to analyze how did I get from this starting photo of a beautiful muscle car that is a Chevy Camaro SS from 1969 into this fully composite kind of a moody image so as you see the, the main idea was to place the the muscle car the american muscle car into its natural habitat so i thought about some deserts in arizona nebraska or any other u.s states and i decided to to place it to, to place it there yeah so without further ado let's let's start analyzing the layers so the first is of course the raw conversion so as you see in lightroom there's quite a lot of work that already get us to a quite appealing appealing effect with the overall toning. So without further ado, let's go to Lightroom and analyze the workflow step by step. Okay, so in Lightroom, um, I, have, I of course created a preset for, for this photo. So as you see, quite a lot of toning work is already done here. So as I said, the main idea was definitely to, to warm it up a bit to, to, to get to the particular mood. So definitely the, the temperature of the photo was increased. The tint was, was passed into those slightly magenta areas. I kind of fixed the lighting in a very standard way, I would say. So highlights slightly down, shadows are, are slightly increased. So I guess pretty much all of you guys are, are doing similar similar steps while while doing uh, any type of photos in, in Lightroom. Um, some interesting things can be done with the with two sliders, so vibrance and saturation. I highly recommend to play with those in a opposite manner. So when I'm playing with vibrance in a positive positive values, I, I like to check how the photo looks when I'm playing with saturation in a negative value. So as you see right now, we, we reach some kind of a very vintage like a photo. And, and on the opposite, when I'm playing with saturation on some positive values, I like to play with vibrance in a negative value. So as you see, it, it also gave us some interesting looks. So I highly recommend to, to play with those two sliders uh, in, the opposite, in the opposite way. Um, regarding the tonal curve, nothing special. Pretty much every part of the image is slightly darkened. In hue saturation luminance, I kind of recommend uh, to go into luminance at first. To, to fix the luminance of particular colors and then you are you are well well aware where where are the particular colors on, on the photo so you have perfect control when you are going to hue and saturation to, to control those colors so as you see there is there is like a trial and error play of, of those various sliders nothing really nothing really well organized there is definitely not a right solution somewhere hidden in those sliders. I was just playing to, to get some, some uh, pleasant uh, looks to, to my eyes. Um, regarding split toning, it's, it's, it's as well very simple, very popular uh, split. So highlights are slightly dominated by yellows. 
shadows are dominated by blue cyan so i guess it's a very very common very popular look no <clears throat> nothing nothing serious done in sharpening nothing regarding noise reduction i enabled the the lens correction in a prof profile correction because this this photo was like a car spotting uh, shot i would say because as you see the owner is, is already in the car and he was slightly uh, he was slowly driving away so I, I needed to be fast i didn't even think about any any camera settings i just took some 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 quick snapshots and choose uh, and chose this one as a starting starting point um so uh, regarding some some other adjustments in Lightroom, I definitely recommend also to play in the in the camera calibration section. For me, this is the most powerful regarding overall toning. And as you see, I kind of went into some extreme values here and there. So I strongly recommend to play really with some extremes. And don't don't worry if the single slider taken into some extreme value doesn't doesn't do the work i strongly recommend to, to play with some with some uh, various ratios with those sliders and i st strongly strongly recommend to to take it slightly more than your than the average plus two minus two adjustment or something just go go crazy with those get to minus something plus something pretty pretty much and just and just look at the and just look at the effect and i i kind of guarantee that you will get finally some some cool effects so as you see here is the uh, here is the main color grading done in Lightroom. So let's let's go back to Photoshop and analyze the 40 plus layer composite group. Okay, so back to Photoshop and let's open this uh, mysterious group called composite. So as you see, there are 40 plus layers and apologies for making it that messy, but I wanted to show you my whole thinking process, the decisions that are made, uh, the errors that I that I made as well. And why did I choose some photos over an, uh, over another? So so let's analyze it layer by layer. So of course, in the very beginning, I needed to get rid of the things around the car. So the first layer is like a very simple cloning healing brush layer with getting rid of some some portions of those 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 cars, those trash bins, and so on. Then I started to experiment with the background because, of course, I wanted to replace it with some, some nice stock image. That was the first try. I tried to color grade it with selective color, with curves, with gradient map and so on and so on. But I, but I wasn't satisfied with, with the effect. There is a, another, another photo that I wanted to incorporate. Again, it was color graded, selective color, curves, gradient map and so on and so on. But I didn't, didn't didn't choose this photo as well um, and here is a final sky replacement stock image and I thought that this is a finally a good starting point so the sky was definitely color graded with some 3d 3d lots in a color lookup adjustment layer so if you are not familiar with color lookup uh, adjustment layers with 3d lots uh, Mo already has a great, great video posted on his channel on, on this, on this, ma on this matter. So I highly recommend to, to check it out. So here is a one color grading with 3D LUT, and here is a gradient map that matched the tones quite good. And as you see in the preview of the gradient map, those are just two colors. So there is no hundred of colors inside this gradient. There, is there are just two colors, some kind of a sepia, yellowish-like, and this gradient map already already did some, some good job in, in toning the, the sky. There is also some selective color layer to, to, to add the overall toning to the image. Um, and then I started to play, ar play around with some, some lovely little house that I decided to put in. So here is the, this little house, and of course, and of course, I needed to dodge and burn it, to, to, to color correction, to, to color correct it. So curves, selective color, uh, some dodging and burning on soft light layer. Again, so color lookups. Again, some some dodging and burning. And I finally, and I finally was satisfied with the effect. So so the the, the little house is looking quite natural as it was in the photo from from the start. So then finally the car pops in. So here is the, the car layer that was that was just cut out using pen tool. Um, I I 
managed to to darken slightly the the front front window with some dodging and burning using using also some color with this blue little upper part of the window then i decided that of course i need to do some some shading that will place the car even better and in the scenery so here is the layer that is the same car actually but the layer is in soft light blending mode and i mask out some some areas that i didn't want to to pop in so here is like a first level of shading of the car then i needed to 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 clean out some some reflections that i didn't want and i started to play with some reflections on the car on the car itself so here are some additional reflections and of course re we need to remember that the re the reflections if we are creating such moody and well defined when it comes to toning image, the reflections should also be color corrected properly to the whole scenery. So, of course, the, the, the reflections are also colored here using gradient, gradient map. And then I decided to play with some artificial smoke. And those are my own smoke brushes. But as probably many of you are aware, Mr. Alex McKenzie, a.k.a. 85mm, who was hosting this, this video a couple of weeks ago, uh, was uh, giving away some of his great smoke brushes, so I definitely recommend uh, to, ch to check out this uh, this matter. Um, so again, um, I I've added some smoke, I've color graded it with some hue and saturation, I added more, more smoke, I color graded in the same way, more smoke, more color grading, more smoke, more color grading, and in the end more smoke and more color grading. So to, to get to the even more natural look of the smoke, I decided to place some floating dust overlay. So here is the floating dust overlay in a screen mode. And this already created some even more natural effect with this dust flying around in the smoke. So here is again some floating dust. Again, this is color graded. Again, some floating dust. Again, color grading. Again, floating dust. Again, color grading. So after that, I finally decided to place some sun reflections. So here is a simple sun overlay that is even even very very roughly erased that that on the areas that I didn't want to to to, to pop into the final image, and then I have some general color correction of the whole photo. So here is a color lookup. Here is again different color lookup layer. And here is a matter that I would like to uh, that I would like you to pay attention to. Here is a luminosity mask, and we we won't get to a luminosity mask topic right now in this video. But I definitely recommend you to search on the internet what are luminosity masks, how we can create them, and trust me that this is a freaking powerful color grading. Uh, well, when it's used with color grading tools, this is a freaking powerful tool to, to selectively color grade your, your images. Here is an, another, another hue and saturation layer to slightly desaturate the ground. Um, another, another selective layer for some, something related with the car itself. Some color grading to, to this little adjustment. And the final and the final image with a vignette and more cloning of the unwanted reflection on, on the car is here. So as you see, this is a fully finished, fully finished composite. So uh, I hope you find this video uh, interesting. I hope you will find it useful. If you will have any questions, just drop, drop a comment on YouTube or find me on Instagram or wherever. I'm, I'm kind of online non-stop, so I'm, I'm always happy to answer some questions. Um, composing in general is a lot of fun. I definitely, I definitely enjoy that. And even if you, you will take not a perfect photo from, from scratch, I would say, uh, you, can also, you can also rescue that in, in composing process. So as you see, the very beginning was not really appealing to, to many. But the end product is kind of nicely looking. So thanks for now. Enjoy the video. Take care. Bye-bye. It's amazing how close I can get to this lens and yet it manages to focus kind of precisely. Anyway, I'll have one of those Mao days live to talk about the new gear that I got, the new vlog camera and the setup behind me. 
Matt, thank you for this awesome video. I think it's very informative. It has some really amazing tips. Well, if you do have any questions, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to uh, follow Matt on Instagram and uh, Facebook. I'll leave a link to his accounts in the description below. And that's it. I'm signing off. I'll see you in the next video.